right now. What we need as a party and as a country is a president who will go big, lead America to big achievements and big goals again. And there's nobody, Bob, who can do big better than me. Several days later. That is a failure of leadership. And I, you can boo all you want. But here's the thing. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, you can't make this stuff. <laughs> Chris Christie, Chris Christie, this guy is not serious, bro. This guy is not serious. This man, nobody, this man said nobody does big better than him. Boy, he, he won't lie about that. That's the truest thing this man has ever said. Nobody does big better than Chris Christie, okay? Who apparently is going to be doing some, some big things, okay? He's going to be doing some big things. Um, because he's trying to take down Trump, right? And, uh, this guy really wants us to believe that he can do that, okay? And, um, you know, he, he apparently is what the establishment is calling a kamikaze candidate in the GOP primary, right? He's simply in the primary, not because he's actually trying to win. It's because he's, he's trying to take down Trump. He's trying to take down Trump by exposing Trump and attacking Trump, but the unfortunate reality for him in the mainstream liberal media, who, again, he's trying to appeal to, he's not doing this for Republicans or conservatives. He's doing this for CNN, right? He's doing this for MSNBC. Okay, that's what he's actually doing. The unfortunate reality is that uh, Christie attacking Trump is not going to work, right? Just like all the attempts in the past to attack Trump is not going to work. So I want to talk about it because... This guy got booed at a faith and freedom conference when he was trying to go after Trump. <laughs> People weren't feeling it. And I want to play this clip and the mainstream liberal media reaction to it because that's just as hilarious, right? They're sad that this attack is not working. Uh, and talk about Chris Christie, right? Because this guy definitely has some big problems if he believes that he is going to be the one to take down Trump. So I want to talk about it. But before I get into that, I just want to let you guys know. If you like my channel, you want to support my channel, you can check out my merch, like, for example, the shirt I'm wearing right now, my fat phobic <laughs> shirt. You can get that at my website, gformabcp.com. Get 20% off. Use the discount code TBCP. So without further ado, let's roll this clip. And Ali, I want to play something that just happened there at the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Chris Christie got booed. Uh, this is the first time, you know, that he has tested mm -hmm. his campaign strategy of going up against Donald Trump. He's the only one who's doing it that vigorously. And he said that Donald Trump had failed the Republican Party. Let's watch. In debate prep in 2020, why am I running for president of the United States? I'm running because he's let us down. He has let us down because he's unwilling. He's unwilling to take responsibility for any of the mistakes that were made. Any, uh, any of the faults that he has and any of the things that he's done. And that is not leadership, everybody. That is a failure of leadership. And I, you can boo all you want, but here's the thing. Our faith teaches us that people have to take responsibility for what they do. People have to stand up and take accountability for what they do. And I, I cannot stand by, and as soon as I've started to be critical, after all of that, and after you offered me White House Chief of Staff, now what he does is call me names and belittle me. Brendan, does that strategy work? Uh, well, well, credit to Chris Christie for, for going in there and, and doing that and saying that. I, I think what's, what won't work is, is just letting things go on the direction they're headed. So I, I give him credit for, for stepping in there. But it shows what um, Chris Christie and all of them are up against. I mean, this is a, a president who, despite his long sort of twisted history on the issue of abortion, people see him much more as a, a leader of a movement, a leader of uh, frankly, a culture war than anything else, and people don't back away from from that very easily. Um, so, you know, that, I think that demonstrates that Chris Christie has a long way to go. 
boy, I got to tell you, these Washington elite insiders are really the most clueless people in politics. And that's why you see people like Chris Christie thinking that what he's doing is actually a good idea. Because he's being advised by absolute idiots who are not in touch with everyday Americans, especially Trump supporters. So Chris Christie uh, is going to respond to him getting booed uh, with this. Take a look. That there are there are a lot of people of faith in that room who want to hear the truth. And look, guys, we can't pretend that Donald Trump is a man of character. This is a guy who paid off a porn star. This is a guy who has regularly lied. This is a guy who's abused people who've worked for him. I mean, I consider myself, now that he's taken off on me, I'm happy to be with Rex Tillerson and with Jim Mattis and with John Kelly and with Mark Esper and with Bill Barr, who he called a gutless pig. I mean, these, this is not character. And what I was trying to make sure I emphasize to those folks in there is, if we are people of faith, the absolute, one of the cornerstones to faith is character. And it is, it is an absolute lack of character. This guy offered me White House Chief of Staff and then was on a podcast yesterday saying he never trusted me. Well, what does that make him, a liar or an idiot? It's one or the other. Because if you offered me Chief of Staff and you never trusted me, then you're an idiot. And if you did trust me enough to offer me Chief of Staff, then you're a liar. Either way, I don't think that's the kind of person we want behind a desk in the Oval Office. And I came here to this organization today because I respect them. I respect every one of the people in that room who are there because they care about the country and they want to elect the best person they can. But I'm not going to come here like other candidates will and pander to them. I'm going to say exactly what I think. I knew there was a lot of Trump fans out there and I knew I was likely to get booed. But you know what? I guarantee you one thing. I made every person in that room think today. And that's part of your job as a leader. is not to tell them what they want to hear. It's to tell them what they need to hear. Yeah, so that is Chris Christie's explanation, right, of him attacking Trump and getting booed. Now, here's the thing about Chris Christie that I find to be fascinating, okay? Because he was a wannabe Trump before Trump actually came along, okay? He was the straight shooter, you know, straight talker, tell it like it is type of guy. And he thinks that that's the reason why he can take down Trump. But see, the unfortunate reality for people like Chris Christie is that he's not doing this because he actually wants to win or he thinks that he can win. He's clearly doing it simply as a kamikaze mission just to take down Trump, which, again, is a very obvious thing, right? It just makes him seem a lot less credible in regards to his attacks and where it's coming from because, to me, it seems like he's doing the bidding of CNN and MSNBC. And the reason why I know this is because Chris Christie can't even get the most basic layup issue of the Republican Party correct in regards to children and their ability to transition take a look new hampshire where he's doing quite well already making an impact governor your thoughts about the push in florida and arkansas to make it illegal to do it for kids under 18 brian you know i just don't want to see our government getting more more intrusive in everybody's life getting bigger um, i don't think anything can replace parents when you're talking about major decisions that are need to be made by our children and i would tell you this i want all parents out there to think about something um, how many other decisions do you want the government making for you um, in your home uh, regarding your kids um, i don't want any of those decisions made by the government parents are the ones who love their children the most who care about their children the most who want to Understand their children the most and parents should be the ones making these decisions so if a 14 year old comes home and says I really want to start uh, switching genders that's the parents decision Absolutely. I tell you, it's more of a parent's decision than it is a governor's decision, for goodness sakes, Brian. You, you really think that Sarah Huckabee Sanders uh, should be making this decision for children in Arkansas? I, I love Sarah. I think she's a great person and a really good governor. But I don't think she would ever allow the government to substitute her judgment um, uh, as a mother um, for uh, their judgment. And that's what I'm saying. I would want any government official coming in and telling me what decisions I can help my child through and how I should do it and I want those decisions to be made by parents not by the government all right let's switch and talk about your candidacy uh, but of yeah so this is the guy that thinks he actually has a chance of taking him down Trump in the Republican primary he can't even get the most basic 
easiest layup policy position in the Republican Party today correct, okay, when he's talking about so-called gender-affirming care for minors. This guy thinks that this old-school libertarian answer, because it's not a conservative answer, the libertarian position of, well, I just want to keep the government out of it, right? The government shouldn't be making these decisions, okay? But let the woke parents and the let woke doctors uh, make these decisions, right? Because the parents don't have any perverse incentive to push their children into this stuff. Like, for example, to be able to go on TikTok and say, that, hey, look, my kid is transitioning. Give me a whole bunch of views and send me a whole bunch of money. And the doctors don't have any incentive to do this because, again, it's not like these kids are going to be on medical treatments for the rest of their lives. Like, they're not money uh, for uh, the medical establishment for the rest of their lives, right? Let's not pretend there's not a you know, capitalistic incentive here to push kids into this stuff, right? No, 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 let's not pretend that. We got we got to have the government, we got to have the government stay out of it, right? Let's stay out of these kids before they're able to consent being pushed into making these decisions. He thinks that that's a winning message, right? That that's going to win with the conservative base. Again, these people don't know the difference between conservatives and libertarians. We're not libertarians, right? We are conservatives. It doesn't mean that we don't believe in any government at all. We believe in limited government, but necessary government. There are some uh, places where the government actually does belong. And I think in this situation right here, <laughs> again, I think that we can have the government come in and say, hey, let's allow these kids to wait till they're 18, okay? The science on this is not settled. It's not even close to settled. It's too risky, okay? I don't think that that's a controversial position. But again, Chris Christie, who again wants us to believe that he's trying to win, uh, is taking that position. Uh, a, a position that, again, is opposed to basically most of the conservative base. Again, this guy's a clown, right? He's an absolute clown. He's not a serious person. Because we've seen time and time again, every single time these people try to do this, it doesn't do anything but make Trump stronger. The more you attack Trump, the stronger he gets, okay? There have been some polls that have shown Trump increasing in his favorability in the Republican Party and <laughs> leading the primary even more uh, after all of the attacks against him from the deep state and from other Republicans. He continues to grow stronger and stronger and stronger because the more you attack Trump, the stronger he gets, okay? It's really that simple. I don't know why these people have not understood that lesson. The only way that you can beat Trump it's to basically stand on your own two feet with your own merit, right? That's the best chance that you have. But again, Chris Christie's not standing on anything. <laughs> but hopefully he's standing on a scale, right? He needs to stand on a scale. But other than that, he ain't standing on nothing, okay? He ain't standing on nothing. All he's standing on is a platform that has been forced upon him, that's been pushed on him by the mainstream liberal media establishment because they're desperate, right? They're desperate. And it's clear and obvious that this man is a pawn. He's a pawn that is being used to attack Trump. Because again, that's what this guy lives for. He lives to be on mainstream cable news as one of the good guys, right? He's one of the good Republicans, even though they hate this man's guts. They can't stand this guy. Again, MSNBC can't even do a segment about this without mentioning that, hey, Chris Christie has a position on abortion that we disagree with, right? We don't like his position on abortion, but look at him attack Trump, right? Again, they're already telling you, if Trump wasn't around, you would be Trump, right? They would be attacking you the same way that they attacked Trump. And again, that's what people like Adam Kinzinger, Liz Cheney, Chris Christie, all these Republicans that want to be in bed with the liberal media establishment, that's why they don't understand. If it wasn't for Trump, <laughs> these people would be attacked endlessly, they wouldn't have any positions on these mainstream cable shows because they will be public enemy number one. But again, they think that a winning strategy is just coming out here and attacking Trump, attacking Trump, attacking Trump. When we've seen time and time again, that actually just makes Trump stronger, right? Because it's proof and evidence to a lot of people that, hey, uh, if these people don't want Trump to be in office so bad, that must mean that he's the right, right guy for the job, right? That's all it does. So good luck to Chris Christie, right? We'll see how this works out. But I do think, for real, man, for real, real talk, you got much bigger problems than Trump that you personally need to deal with. I'm just saying, I would worry about those issues more so than Trump. But hey, best of luck to the guy. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.